In this video, you will learn about class imbalance. This is a problem when developing deep learning model for medical imaging and uh, obviously for tissue image analysis as well. Hi, I'm Alexandra Zhurev and I'm here to help you do better digital pathology. So if you are up for that this year, be sure to click the bell below and be notified every time I release a new video. This video is part of a webinar I gave for the Davis Thompson Foundation and this was part of a day seminar. It was a paid event and I chopped this webinar into small pieces and this is one of them. There is a playlist with all of them or at least some of them at the time of releasing this video and also there is a link below to register for the full thing if you don't feel like watching multiple videos. Class imbalance is something very common in medical imaging and has to be accounted for when doing image analysis especially deep learning based image analysis for medical imaging. So let's dive into what it actually is and how to deal with it. An important problem in our medical profession, not only pathology, but in the whole medical profession, is class imbalance. Class imbalance means that the classes we're looking for are not equally represented in the image. So in this example, you just have one red fish and plenty of different blue fish. We have different shades of blue, but in general, there is more blue than red. So what do we do in this case? How do we train? The system needs to see enough of each class of data to be able to later detect it. So what do we do if we have something like this, like a rare event, like even the mitotic figures, when you have a neoplastic mass, you have enough mitotic figures, but compared to the rest of the image, it's so little, very little. So there is always or very often class imbalance in medicine, in pathology, in, pathology, in uh, medical imaging. So what we can do here to help the algorithm perform better, we can review the metrics we are using to see if our algorithm is doing a good job. So we have to have appropriate metric to what we want the algorithm to be doing. And I'm going to talk a little bit about this. Um, we can use cost sensitive learning. So later we're going to talk about the architecture of a neural network. We can reward the network for finding the underrepresented class. And then it looks for it more. It, uh, it is rewarded for the underrepresented class. We can adjust our sampling. What we can do, we can either sample, look for many examples of the underrepresented class so that we balance it with the overrepresented. So we look for more red fish somewhere else in some other images, and we, we do that. Or we just take fewer blue fish. So we can do either oversampling or undersampling, depending on which class we're feeding more data from and which we're feeding less data from. And what we can also do is use a different type of approach, anomaly detection. And this is holy grail of toxicologic pathology, because we are dreaming of having something that tells us screens the normal and flags the abnormal. And in pathology, it's just difficult to do, but this is what we are working on, what the community is working on in ToxPath to have this kind of anomaly detection that we don't have to know, have every abnormality named and shown and exactly pinpointed where this is, but we want to sort the normal from the abnormal and everything so we train for normal and then let the system flag as the abnormal. You're here at the end, so you might be interested in the full thing. Go ahead and click the link below and watch the full webinar. It's a good one. It's like a course. So this is everything for free. 